It's a demo. Five of Chet and John's reassuringly finite gaming playlist. My name is Chet Rovers. With me, as usual, is John Denton. It was happening. Um, this is a bit of an experiment. Uh, well, it's not really an experiment. It's a very busy week, so this is going to be a shorter show than usual. Uh, we hope because we're just doing top fives. Uh, no plans to do this again. It's just uh, yeah, we're going to start doing it when uh, it's exceptionally uh, busy week, and it has been. So there you go. Top fives we're going to do this week, and that's that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Let's do this shit. My number five, then, is the game that uh, you demanded I play all week. Is uh, <laughs> <laughs> Proxy Blade Zero, the Xbox Live indie game that you played last week on last week's show. Mm. Uh, this is the kind of uh, Tronny third-person action game, third-person brawler. And, yeah, you're right. It's It's remarkable that it kind of exists in a space where you're used to 2D dating games and games yeah. about someone coughing or, you know, Xbox Live indie games. Uh, it feels and looks like a, a proper game. You know, it's really impressive what they managed to do in terms of getting a proper combat system with dodges and parries and different stances and stuff in there. And it, while you are essentially just running down corridors, waiting for some robots and then hitting the robots, you know, it's it, it does a, a good job. I didn't play as much as you, so I didn't get to the point where it got uh, repetitive, but I can't imagine that happening. But I was just... I wasn't blown away by it, but I was very impressed by what they managed to do within that space. And, mm. um, you know, the clearly... The, the combat here isn't really anything you've not seen before, although some of the stuff where uh, you have to change your stance is reasonably interesting. But I could see if, you know, those guys got a bit more money. Well, is it one person or...? Uh, developed by one guy and then some another person did the music. Ah, OK. I'd imagine if he, could, if he had a bit of cash behind him, maybe a few more people, he could actually put together something quite slick. Mm. So uh, yeah, uh, definitely impressed by it. The, the yeah. guy's got a lot of talent. A lot of talent. Mm. It's a weird one though because I know it's on Steam Greenlight at the moment. Um, but w- where do you go? It's 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 very much a console game, and it's well, I suppose it's the same on consoles. I was going to say that the sort of the chasm between the quality of of that and something, but then. The, the same is true of PC. Um, so I just it's, it's going to have a hard time finding its audience unless it gets sort of polished a bit more uh, before it turns up on PC. I did. I realised that I misspoke last week because I said that you don't use the evasive manoeuvre to get out of skirmishes when you blatantly do. It's just that if it, it doesn't cancel attacks is what I meant, mm. um, which is a real problem when it gets busier later on. Um, well, I'm glad you played it anyway. Yeah, it's very impressive. But um, do would I actually continue to play it? Probably not. Hmm. All right. Um, yeah, it's a shame it's not about the amount that you played should have been the full game. I think that's that was my main issue. It, it had no business being as long as it, yeah. as it is. Um, okay, my number five is Smart As on the PlayStation Vita, um, which is uh, on, on PlayStation Plus at the moment. Um, I think it's developed in house. I'm pretty sure it's first party Sony, although I'm not 100 percent sure. I mean, it's a terribly unhip title, Smart As. That's mm. something that people used to say in the 80s, um, and it's actually a very unhip game. Have you? Uh, did you play this? No, I've heard the name, and then I yeah, I meant to get it, I think, and then forgot. Yeah, it's the PlayStation Vita equivalent of Brain Training. Um, uh, okay. But incidentally, where is Brain Training gone? It, it I was don't know. Omnipresent, and now yeah, Doctor Kawashima. Where are you? Yeah. Was there a flop in the series or something? Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just, just weird how yeah, it was like. It, it was like Maybe yeah, everyone realised it was fucking bollocks and they couldn't release it anymore. Oh, what you mean? It was just on just full of lies. Did you did you feel smarter for doing saying oh, no, yellow I mean, is blue or whatever? <laughs> no, no. Counting um, counting as you brush your teeth. Fuck off, Kawashima. <laughs> counting as I brush my teeth. Yeah, I mean, it, it was dishonest, but at least it was fun. Anyway, this one is its the equivalent. It's got John Cleese doing the voice, um, and he does the best with the script. But again, 
it, the whole package feels like it's been assembled by somebody who should have retired five years ago, who's suddenly been, they had, you know, this, just the phrases that are in it, like G-Wizzle, I think was one, and he keeps calling you Sparky, and you're just like, who, who am I being talked to by? It sounds like a boardroom full of really old people. Um, the, it, the, the, it's what you'd expect. There's maths problems, logic puzzles, word games, and it's totally serviceable, and it utilises the touch screens, uh, the front on the front and the back, really well, and those work terrifically well. Also, I thought until I got to this word game and I realised that maybe it's just on my Vita, but I tried probably 20, 30 times. I, I realised basically that it can't read S's or D's. It thinks S's are E's and D's are O's. And I tried them every which way in every possible fashion I could. I couldn't put in S or D's. Mm. Uh, so there were a couple of word puzzles that I couldn't finish. And I got like one star and John Cleese was like, hey, you're an idiot. Um, <laughs> Actually, the whole thing's quite harsh and rude because it's you know it's a three star system. But if you get one or two stars, which is pretty good, John Cleese takes the piss out of you, and you're just like, well, one right. star is not pretty good. Well, I don't know. Out of three, I mean, because you can get no stars. I was getting okay. no stars at first. Um, but yeah, the whole thing's completely frivolous. Uh, it doesn't pretend to have anything to do with science or brain training. It's not like the Nintendo version, which sort of pretended to have some sort of uh, its root in something scientific it's just a laugh and it's fun enough to be a laugh just i'll probably do it every day for a week because the daily test you can do is takes about five minutes maybe less uh, and it's fine it's entertaining but the second i need the space back on my vita yes yeah, it's, it's gone tartar sauce right mm. um yeah I, I don't know if i'll even bother i don't it's fine yeah. it's all right i don't need my brain trained by john cleese <laughs> no. maybe i do oh, and and taking the piss out of as well yeah I'd rather that. Okay, uh, my number four then, weirdly, is uh, Dark Souls. Dark Souls 1, uh, the original Dark Souls. Um, I don't really know why I decided to put this on. I had a bit of time the other day and I just thought, I don't know. I, I, do, know, I do know why, because lots of people were talking about it in the last week, obviously, because the sequel is out. And uh, our friend Dave Turner has been playing it again. And I thought to myself, if Dave can play it and could do quite well, then I reckon I can. So um, I stuck it back on, and I had, I've had i said this before, I had actually played this game for hours because I got the game before it came out, and so I didn't know that you had to go up first. I was one of the people that went down first, spent hours trying to work out what to do there, fucking ran into the skeletons, you know. I was one of the guinea pigs, so I was telling people to go up before anybody was telling people to go up anyway. So in actual fact, in how far I'd got in the game was nowhere, but I had played it for hours and hours. But now I've got quite uh, quite far past that. Obviously, it's rather good. Um, I, it's not. I don't think it's going to sink its claws into me in the same way that it does with so many people. I don't think. Um, I, I've always been impressed by the atmosphere and the kind of mood of it. it, it it's, it's always reminded me of Nightmare, which is my favourite TV show ever. The the kids' TV show where you walk around with a with a helmet on your head and the people tell you what to do. It's just always reminded me of that because that show is really harsh. Like you, you mm. get instantly killed in that, and it's very. It always, it's just reminded me of that. And as you continue, it. it, it it definitely does as well. And, um, yeah, I, I obviously, I don't... The thing is with Dark Souls, it's like, what can I say? What can I add to the conversation as John Denton, a guy, has played a chunk of the game when people have played the game so many times and so many articles have been written by yeah. good people? I mean, what can I really add to the conversation? Nothing, obviously. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, never has a game really managed to keep its claws in me. Like I said, I, I first played it before it came out. I think I probably had review code of it two weeks before it came out in this country. And yet still, I'm going back to it. So it must be doing something right. I rang the first bell. That's obviously a thing that people care about. Um, I summoned some people into the world, which was really interesting, actually. I didn't even really realise what I was doing, but uh, before I fought a, a boss... Uh, which was always excruciatingly difficult. Um, there was some lines on the floor, and it said, summon this, summon this. So I just started pressing the button, and then two orange ghost people came into my world, but they were real people, and they were obviously very, very high level, and they absolutely smashed the ever-loving shit out of everything in their way and the boss and then fucked off. And I was like, ah, oh, cheers, because I got all the souls for it. Yeah. So I was like, do you know what? I didn't mind doing that at all because I like I probably would have given up on that boss if it was annoying, but now I don't have to. So I might just do that again, which is probably absolute... Uh, absolute sacrilege to to Dark Souls fans, but yeah, I don't know. It's 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 very very good. I'd like to at some point get to the point where I've played enough of it to play the sequel and and talk about that. We haven't talked about the sequel on this podcast because again, I don't think that I think if you if you're going to play Dark Souls two, you already knew you were going to play Dark Souls two. You're not waiting for 
Chench on to talk about a game that which they know not enough. Yeah. Uh, but I would like to get to the point where I can talk about it because it does, you know, too many people say it's the best game ever made to to not to not try. But God knows why I put it back on. I really don't know. Apart from uh, I wanted to be better than Dave. Well, there is no. I mean, it is incessant to talk about it. Just yeah, it on is social media, especially. Um, yeah, did you? Are you playing the console one? Yeah, back on. Yeah, I, I'm back on um, 360 after they did it super cheap on there. The um, yeah, I have it on PC as well, uh, but I don't know. It was too. I was, I was, the settings were they're all fucked, and I did the thing with the mod to get it in 1080, and it's still the frame rate. It was just one of those PC games. It was just every two minutes you're pausing it to try and fix it instead of just playing it. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's better for me on on the console. Mm. Uh, I'm really starting to regret not picking it up for a few quid because. Uh, oh, did I'd you like not to... grab it? No, I, I mean, it's annoying because part of me knows that I will play it again, but I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, it'll appear it again. It, um, you know, as unusual and RPG is it, it RPG as it is, and all the the fucking language that it uses that can be off putting. What I do like about it is it's fundamentally just a game about running up and twatting people in the head with an axe. Then yeah. I'm I'm always on board for a bit of that. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, I'd like to, I, I'd like to play the sequel as well, but I'd, I I need to make a dent in the first one, mm. uh, which I'll do at some point. Um, okay, my number four is a game called Along Came a Spider on the Xbox 360. It's an indie game, um, and it's a physics based platform game from um, Rag Rago Hard Rago Hard. I don't, I can't. It's it's a word that looks kind of like that. Um, he's the, the guy who developed Saturn Nine, which was a small but very tight little horror FPS. Oh, yeah. Uh, also on Xbox, I spoke about it a little while ago. And this is, uh, like that game, it's on Steam Greenlight, so he's trying to push these onto PC. Uh, this is actually an old game, it came out in 2010. Um, the first thing that you notice as soon as it starts is that it's got a really good soundtrack, which loops seamlessly without you noticing. Um, and the background is kind of just white lines, um, so it kind of... and they bob along to the music, so it kind of looks a little bit like Vib Ribbon oh, at yeah. points. Uh, but you're basically a spider travelling from left to right, and you need to uh, get to the web, and it's A to jump, and you also hold A to grip onto ledges, and then X fires a web uh, that attaches to edges and corners, and you can swing around. The format's pretty standard, 20 levels, in each of them are three flies, and you have to find the three flies sort of uh, unlock the other levels. It's, it's a very difficult one, though, because it's very frustrating at points because the physics are not perfect. They're kind of fuzzy. Um, so sometimes you, you're unable to build momentum by swinging because the elasticity of your webbing kind of pulls you, like, so you start bobbing. And other times you're meant to propel yourself like an elastic band, but the gravity kind of makes you swing off course. It's really weird and kind of wishy-washy. And in a game like this, it just needs to be perfect. It's uh, it's it's stylish and very clever about 30% of the time. Like a lot of indie games, it mm. ends up treading water too soon. Um, so you're jumping on platforms and jumping on platforms and doing things that you've done countless times before just to pad the package out a little bit. And it's also a, a wee bit snide because those collectibles, the flies, that you need to get, you can't... I mean, if you just finish the level, you can't progress. You have to p- collect those flies. Right. And not only are some of them tucked away in hard-to-reach places, some of them just run away from you. And sometimes their patterns are preset, so you can sort of wait for them to do a lap and catch them on the way back. But some of them didn't appear to be, and it appeared to be blind luck that I caught some of them, um, which is just, you know, if I hadn't have caught some of them, I wouldn't have been able to um, progress through the game. Uh, it's also really unclear. This is the most irritating thing about it. It's really unclear about when it's game over, uh, because you don't have many lives, and it's a game that's built around instant restarts, and yet, if you die too many times, it throws you back to the main menu. So when you've been grinding and dying and surviving by the skin of your teeth, narrowly managing to pick up one of those collectibles that you need, only to be thrown back to the main menu unannounced, it's not its not a slap in the face, it's a, a headbutt to the balls. <laughs> um, having said that, I started to notice as I was playing it more and more that I think the, le- the spider's legs come off right. um, to sort of tell you how many lives you've got, which is a brilliant system, mm. really. Um, but as you're essentially just a ball with tassels rather than a spider, because it is quite primitive, it's hard to notice how many legs you have at any point. So, I don't know, as, as a proviso, that kind of thing's just kind of cheap and nasty these days. It's a difficult game anyway. It doesn't really need lives. Um, in games like this, I think lives have kind of become a pretty outdated notion. Mm. Um, the fact that you can lose all that progress and go back. Yeah. Um, there's also a glitch whereby if you play a level and get two of the three flies and then you try it again and only get one, it saves it as one. So you can't 
It's a, that's just a glitch. I'm sure that'll be fixed before it goes to PC. Um, and it's a very slow game as well. Um, it feels like you're playing underwater, so when you die, you have to spend about four seconds watching yourself plummet to the bottom of the screen, which right. just makes everything just, just really upsetting. Uh, I don't know. It's a really... Yeah, like I said, 30% of the time, it's really slick and stylish and very clever, and then the rest of the time, it's maddeningly frustrating and just kind of tre- water-tready. So, I don't know. I really wanted to like it, though. Mm. It's, it, you know, as somebody who's checked out Xblig every week for, for years. The fact that this came out in 2010 um, uh, and it, it looks as good as it does. I mean, go, if, if, go on Steam Greenlight and type in Along Came a Spider. There's a trailer of it and you're like, wow, that looks really, really quite good. Uh, just a reminder that um, Xblig games can actually look really, really uh, uh, really effective. But the game, is, it's too hard for me, I think. Um, but I, I, I do admire it. I thought it was going to be a Morgan Freeman game, so I'm a bit disappointed overall. Morgan Freeman. Oh right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, my my number three then is uh, Luftrausers by uh, Vlambeer. Right. The mm. uh, I played it on PC. This is the um, the bi- oh, it's not biplane game. It's a plane plane shooting game. Um, but you, you've seen the, the the footage of this and stuff, haven't you? Mm. Yeah. So um, yeah, Vlambeer, the the Dutch guys that made Ridiculous Fishing, um, they made Super Crate Box. They're making a game called Nuclear Throne, which is on uh, early access at the moment, which is like a roguelike uh, sort of top down shooter, which looks really good. Um, they have an amazing skill in making games feel really good. They 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 do most of their work in two D and. Um, kind of with old-fashioned mechanics, but they they spruce them up and do them in new ways. But they they make their games feel really satisfying to play. Um, every single one of their games I've played is like this, uh, and Luftwaffe is definitely that. It's kind of done in this almost looks like Game Boy graphics, I'd say, uh, but with yeah. a sepia tint. Um, you're you're supposed to be like a, a daredevil uh, fighter pilot from World War Two era. And basically the whole game is uh, a sub comes up from the water, launches you into the sky, and you fly around shooting all the different stuff that's in the sky, the different planes, uh, the boats that are underneath. Uh, everything that you kill adds to your multiplier. Uh, and you've just got to try and keep... It's just standard stuff, right? You've got to try and keep your multiplier up, get uh, your score as high as possible, and before you die. You, it's one life and then you're done. Um, where it has an ingenious mechanic, though, um, the first of uh, of a few of those, is that your plane is not a one one hit and death uh, vehicle. It, it, it can take a little bit of damage, and it shows that damage by almost like a spotlight getting smaller onto your plane. Like, I, get, uh, I guess that's how it works. And the only way you can recover your damage is by letting go of the fire button. So most 2D shooters, you hold fire the whole time. But here, you need to let go in order to to heal, basically. So the whole ge- whole game becomes this kind of... I mean, this is all happening very quickly, but this this thing, this kind of race of almost these planes and missiles and stuff chasing you, and if you're getting hit or you've bashed through a few things, you're low on health, you've got to stop firing back to, to clear enough space to, to get your health back. So there's that, that, that constant tension running through it. Um, it controls in a in a kind of unusual way. It actually reminds me of this game that I used to play as a kid called uh, Biplanes, which I think was a rip-off of another game from uh, even before that, but who knows what anything is for when you're like eight years old. But mm. unlike most 2D shooters where you move it the way you're, you're facing or whatever, up moves your plane forward, and then you can kind of spin. So, But every time you press up, you boost. So you're kind of almost cartwheeling through the, the sky here. And it's kind of unwieldy, but it's a really clever control system because you do you do get the hang of it quite quickly, uh, and it makes it hard, but um, just in a, in a kind of really free wheeling well, free wheeling free wheeling way, uh, just just very well designed, and um, the the whole while you're playing challenges come up uh, like kill eight planes. Um, smash 10 things without getting hit, these types of challenges coming up. You complete those and you level up, and every time you level up, you get a, um, a new piece of kit, basically. Uh, it can be a new weapon, it can be a new armor type, or a new type of um, hull, basically, for want of a better word. One of three things. You go into the hangar, and you can just basically build a new craft using these three options. So, say you choose... Uh, first, you have normal bullets. I'm going to switch it to 
I've just unlocked a laser. Um, I've just unlocked uh, a body that can go underwater and not um, not crash. And I've unlocked a, a harder armor. And every, sing, every new build that you make, the plane looks different. It has its own... Every single build, I think there's 125 builds you can make, has its own name. And not only that, amazingly, and I have no idea how it does this, but it, every single build has its own music. So there's this thing that runs through the game, which is a really good tune. But every build that you make has a different... I, I wouldn't. I don't know enough about music to even describe it properly. It, it puts a different track on the tune, so it might take something away and add something else, and then you change one thing and it's put that thing back and change something else. So every single time it has its own soundtrack. I've never seen that before anywhere. It's brilliant. And the game itself is just, yeah, it's just an absolute riot. Brilliantly fast and frantic and uh, fun. Trying to keep your multiplayer up, multiplier up is um, is really hard. It has the kind of sense of humour that the rest of their games have, kind of daft. I like daft humour. Uh, you'll get you, you end up fighting kind of weird enemies and these huge battleships and blimps appear and the whole thing's... You, the, the, the stuff... I saw someone else, I think... Someone else has another podcast, I can't remember which one, kind of described their work like... They're almost like a garage band, you know. They're, they're, they're just... They're riffing and throwing stuff out there. And um, that's kind of a bit bit harsh on on you know the skill and level of design that they put into their work but they definitely have that kind of uh attitude to to just putting stuff out there in, in different genres and uh, with different vibes and uh, really really impressed just a, a tremendously fun game it's got leaderboards and everything like that hard but uh it's just constantly one more go one more go one more go and i played it on pc but it's out on, on vita and i think that was probably going to be the place where uh where it finds most success because it just seems perfect for that console i don't i haven't played that version yet but it does seem perfect for it how much is it i don't know i think it's about five six quid okay that's quite reasonable yeah. is it really difficult uh yes but you just start again straight away instant restarts all right yeah it's just like lasting as long as you can and then yeah just trying to get high score Okay, I, mean, I saw footage of it, and I, didn't it? Didn't you say it was giving you a headache or something? The first time I played it, it gave me a fucking violent headache. Yeah, uh, there's this kind of screen shake that it has to it. That it's because I just kept. I don't think I blinked for about ninety minutes, <laughs> so that's probably why. I've played it since. I played it again today for probably a good another hour, and it didn't. Yeah, it didn't give me the same volume of headache. It still gives me a bit of a headache, but then again, any game that's that intense that you play for that long does. It's always going to make your eyes hurt a little bit. But that's why I also thought that the Vita version would be good because it's a little smaller. So I was playing it through on PC but on the big screen and it doesn't need to be uh, stretched out onto, onto a big HDTV. So, yeah, Vranvia, man, they, they're, they're the ones to look out for. I'm sure everybody knows their stuff already, but those guys, they I think it's only two guys or something, but they're, they're, they're pretty damn special. Hmm. Yeah, I still need to play Ridiculous Fishing. It's on my iPad, and I just I haven't had the time to go it's back. It's just very, very good. Mm. So I hear. Um, okay, that sounds neat. I mean, if, it, if it's five or six quid, I'm just going to buy it on the Vita. Yeah, it, it's um, very play, cool. You played it on the 360 pad, I take it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. My number three is Dead Rising 3, the last agent DLC, which is the final piece of downloadable content for Dead Rising 3. Um, the character this time is a guy by the name of Brad Park, who's a ZDC agent, and he must discover the terrible truth about the outbreak. And uh, yes, whatever. Uh, <laughs> he's actually a guy from the game, uh, in that I mean he actually interacts with characters from the main game and the DLC, so it's automatically more interesting than the others. I mean, if I gave a flying shit about the story, I'd be like, oh, he's actually a part of the story, rather than something that just happened on the sidelines. Uh, the new weapons are really, really good. I don't know why they didn't have them in the main game. The, the, my two favourites in this one are a, a, a gun called a slag shot and a rail gun. <laughs> they're the best. They're just comically over the top. They're like Saints Row weapons. Right. They're power weapons, basically. And then there's this pacifier gun, which makes the zombies do this little jig, like they're having a fit, and then their heads explode. Um, so they're really cool. The game, th this DLC starts with another mission in which you're driving a car from A to B to make sure that it doesn't uh, and making sure that you don't destroy it while doing so which is w what's happened in every single one of these four pieces of DLC and it's fucking boring mm. what's good about this is that it's over as soon as it starts and I thought okay this is good progress we're getting somewhere 
then uh, I realised that the sort of side quests, um, or, or sorry, the fetch quests, I don't know what you call it, the, the, the things that are normally the worst part of these downloadable content mm. packs, they actually involve destroying something. And it's, it's a tiny difference because the other ones just involve pressing a button, but it's a, it's a bit more enjoyable to shoot something. I'd rather shoot something than press a button. Mm. Thanks very much. Uh, and also the, si the actual side quests... Uh, they're still worth ignoring, but most of them involve saving people. So you come across someone standing on a car going, oh, help me, help me. And I was like, fuck me. This actually feels like a Dead Rising game. I used to do that in the old Dead Rising games, including Dead Rising 3. This is something that I haven't done in any of this downloadable content. So it's another small thing, but it's definitely superior. Um, what I said about the car mission earlier, instantly, um, turned out to be not true, because towards the end of this DLC, there's another one of those in which you have to make pit stops uh, on opposite sides of the map. Um basically being a glorified taxi driver and the map has been modified so most of your usual routes are cut off and some of them aren't even marked on the map and if your vehicle explodes after your second pit stop and you've done all of this which has taken 20 minutes driving around and picking people up like a taxi driver not only do you have to do it all again you have to reach the vehicle again because the mission began with you on foot on the other side of the map where the vehicle is so you're ping-ponging around blah 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 like a taxi driver it's brilliant there's not even a boss at the end. Everyone jumps on a chopper. Sorry, spoilers. And uh, you have to, after you know, you do your taxi duty and then you jump on a plane, uh, a chopper. Sorry, uh, it's so boring and it's been so cynically assembled in the belief that fans of this game will play anything. It's created such a stench around the original game, which I loved. But the downloadable content, it, it, this is not worse than the last one. But you know, the first couple of DLC chapters were passable. Uh, but the final two are so shitty and so cynical that I hereby revoke my admittedly quite tepid recommendations of the first two. So just, uh, it's absolutely as wet and rubbish as I expected it was going to be. So if it says Dead Rising 3 on it and it says DLC on it, swerve it like a wet shit on a footpath. It's rubbish. <laughs> rubbish. I actually have the game now. I haven't had time to even install it on the Xbox One, but I do own it, the original, not the DLC. Mm, that, yeah, don't buy the DLC. No, I, I won't. But I am. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to to checking the the main game out. Definitely. Well, it's 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 truly excellent. I'm honestly, it's great. Uh, yeah, soon, soon, maybe in the next podcast. Hmm. But uh, yeah, okay. Uh, on to my number two then. A game that's been talked about a lot this week. It is uh, Metal Gear Solid Five uh, Ground Zeroes. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that's his exact name. Uh, so yes, uh, I think people know what this is. This is the prequel. It's kind of difficult to describe. It's the the prequel standalone game to the proper Metal Gear Solid Five: Phantom Pain, which is due out in 2015. Um, it is a short single mission uh, campaign where you play as Snake, and he basically has to inter infiltrate uh, the equivalent of Guantanamo Bay and rescue two prisoners. Uh, Paz and Chico, uh, and then extract them by uh, helicopter. And that's it, quite frankly. That is it. it, it is, um, it's been widely reported that the game can be finished in anywhere from two hours down to, to ten minutes. Uh, I myself finished this mission, um, the Ground Zero's mission, in, uh, I believe it was 98 minutes was my, my clock, and that included me fucking up massively at one point. It would have been a, a, probably 15 to 20 minutes less had I not fucked up so much. So, yeah, I mean, that is obviously quite short, and, and much has been said about that, and I, I, we'll go on about that in a minute. But to talk about the game itself, um, played on Xbox One. I thought it looked uh, gorgeous, absolutely uh, gorgeous-looking game. Uh, apparently, it's running in 720p compared to the PS4's 1080p. This isn't a time... I haven't seen PS4 version, but this isn't a time where 720p looks last-gen to me. It, it looked it looked every bit a next-gen game. The lighting, the uh, the physics on, like, the cloth in the game and things like that. Just a very, very good-looking game and super smooth as well. Really, the, the frame rate, just everything felt super responsive, super smooth. Really nice game. You, it was just a very nice thing. You feel like you're playing something lavish and well made and expensive uh, mm. and that's very cool that's kind of something Metal Gear's always done very well to be honest and uh, it definitely it definitely has that there and I can't really fault what is given to you um, it's extremely well made as I said there are so many different ways of carrying out your task um, in classic Metal Gear style but probably even more so because now it includes the option to be able to drive vehicles and there are ways that you can get to the, the prisoners with the vehicles. There are ways to extract the prisoners with vehicles. There are ways to use the vehicles as distractions. Uh, there are multiple routes 
through the campus is essentially a small open world but even within that that it's designed so there's there's so many different ways of doing it and um yeah all that stuff's cool it's also been modernized to the point where it actually feels like a a modern game uh it controls like a a, a game that you'd expect if you go back and play certainly metal gear 2 now it controls like a fucking nightmare Mm -hmm. so it's this this just controls like a game yeah it's it's very nice um some really cool stuff that they put in this time. One, if you get spotted, you're given a slow motion split second to do something about it. So it'll, the camera will quickly pan to who spotted you, and you can basically shoot them or, if, if you're close, um, grab them or, or do whatever you, you choose to do in that situation. But it's normally shoot them, and it slows it down in kind of proper bullet time where you can see the bullets. It's a nice... As someone who quite often gets spotted and gets frustrated in stealth games, that's a nice... Um, it's a nice little touch, and it, it kind of makes the whole thing more cinematic than it used to be. And yeah, it's just a really nice system. Um, the other cool system now is the the close quarters combat, where you can grab a guy, um, drag him to where you want to in an easy way. It's not hard to do this; you just hold the right trigger. Uh, from there, you can interrogate him. That's easy too. Just choose an option. Uh, when you interrogate them, they might tell you the whereabouts on the map of uh, like an armory or where you need to go or or, or whatnot. Um, that's really cool. Uh, you can choke them out. You can kill them. Everything about it is very slick. But you know, I finished the I finished the the, the campaign. You get a really quite excellent cutscene at the end of it, and then. It said, okay, you've done 9% and it unlocked a bunch uh, of other missions, but it's all within the same space. And I started the next one, which is set in the day. The the main one's set at night in the rain. And I started playing it and I was like, yeah, this is good. And I was like, am I really going to do this? Am I going to do six missions in this level just sneaking about? I don't know if I am. Like, mm. And it kind of pissed me off because... I get the point. It, I, do you know? I put it. I put out a tweet this week, and it said it was just. just an, it was probably a, a bit of a dickish tweet, but it was something like uh, "relentless cognitive dissonance is the curse of the level headed." And what I meant by that, I was actually a reference to this game, but I don't know why I said it like that. I was just being a dick. Anyway, what I meant is, I can see often in my life, I see both points of view. Here, I think this is a glorified demo, and I don't think it should be charged. This should cost thirty pounds, but at the same time, I can understand that you're paying for class. And some people will get way more hours out of it than me. I can see both points of view at the same time. So I just mm. end up fucking stressing myself out for no reason. Um, so I definitely feel like that with this. And I haven't really landed on um, an opinion either way. But ultimately, the only thing that I know annoys me is if you look at the box cover, Metal Gear Solid is a very popular game, a uh, popular franchise, and it has been around for a long time. And a lot of people who don't necessarily play... Uh, a lot of games, um, and I'm talking from personal experience here, these guys that I know like this, they love Metal Gear. And they will see this box, uh, and, they, you know, they're not people who are following the games press, they're not listening to podcasts, they're not watching YouTube. They just will see a box in a shop, and it just says Metal Gear Solid Five uh, Ground Zeroes. That look, mm. It looks like, here you go, here's the next Metal Gear Solid game, um, 30 quid. And... But I, I know, I know for a fact that some people are going to pick it up without having done the research behind it, and they're going to be pissed off. And I just think it's a little bit. That's the only thing that winds me up. I, I think I'm not in the position to judge people's financial situation. You might be a footballer, you might be a pauper. I don't know what thirty pounds means to you or twenty pounds if you're uh, paying for the current, the, the the previous gen version. So I'm not in a position to judge that. But I do think it's out of order that they're kind of are putting it across like it is a full game on mm. on the box itself. So, yeah, that, that's a bit out of order. And I don't know. It's To me, what, what annoys me the most is I would happily pay a, even a premium price for the full Metal Gear Solid Five. say it costs 60 quid or whatever, with this in it. And I think this would go down as one of the greatest missions in any game ever just because it's the, the breadth of scope of the, all the different ways you can do it. But on its own, you're just like... Okay, this is really well made, but really, I don't know. I was like, <laughs> "You want me to play it again?" And I know people are excited that there's the different missions and all the different ways to play it. But I'm pretty sure you could do that in all the other games that cost around thirty quid and were ten, twelve, fourteen hours long. You could play them in all sorts of different ways and get rewarded for doing so. So I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I'm. I'm certainly not as positive as some people about it, uh, as, as well-made and, and fun as it is. 
Uh, yeah, I finished it earlier today, and I've, I played a couple of the side missions, uh, the extra missions. I'd say. I mean, I, I feel exactly the same way. I don't. I mean, a lot of people have got kind of combative and said that you know they've got quite angry about the fact that people are calling it a demo. It is a demo. Um, I don't know what the history of it is. I don't know whether it was originally going to be free or what, but it is very peculiar that they've put it out the way they have. It's an incredibly simple rescue mission. I did it three times. Um, it's challenging, however you do it, and it is. It is incredible. Look, I mean, it feels like you're getting a you know a taste of something that's still in the future, and it just you know mm. you can't put a price on that. For some people, this will be worth every penny. Um, yeah. You know, I, I said to a friend earlier today, I played the Titanfall beta for twenty plus hours. Mm. I'm sure most people didn't play it for anywhere near that. The difference is that obviously I didn't pay for that. Um, so I, I did it three times. I did it twice, basically as Rambo, and once sort of um, in a sort of more stealthy way. Um, and it was fun, you know, to test the sort of boundaries and experiment a little. Um, and there is more life in it than there is in most demos, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah, after the third time, I was like, I'm done. I did a couple the the, the extra uh, missions where you use the same area to do different things they're kind of like call of duty one of them is just a gun turret thing well, you're not, you've got a gun in your hand but you're flying around on a helicopter did you do that one no i didn't do that one i just did the next one which was you had to take out these two two marines and um they'd done something naughty or something so you had to go and find <laughs> them and, and take them out which is good i was like this is this is fun too but don't pretend that this is anything other than a sneaky little extra, the likes of which you get in the proper Metal Gear Solid games that were full games. You get little extras like that. You get the VR missions in some of them, you know. You get extra things to fucking Ava escape in Metal Gear 3. I don't buy that as, oh, this is a full game. I, It is what it is, and I think if you go into it knowing that, then by all means, you, uh, you do what you want, but... I don't. I just. I don't know. Like all the fucking Metal Gear games have a mission at the beginning, and then the full game. Metal Gear Three has it. Metal Gear Two has it. That's what this feels like. It should have been. That's what I thought it was for ages until a few weeks ago when they said it was actually being released as a, as its own thing. I thought it was mm. Ground Zeroes is the the beginning bit that you play, and then the Phantom Pain is after. It's like the virtuous mission in Metal Gear Three, and then Snake Eater and what whatnot. But oh, I don't know. I'm not going to get angry about it. But and it's. it's it's a beautiful game. Mm, really is. Yeah, I mean, I played Titanfall after this, and I was like, whoa, it was like a big step backwards. Mm. Actually, um, I actually have that, that, that on my notes, pretty much word for word. Yeah. Um, it's. I mean, it, there's some pretty strong meat in it as well. Did you listen to all of the audio logs, or have you heard about some of the audio logs? I haven't listened to them all, no. Um, I, I do intend to, to go back and... and play a bit more and, and kind of dig a bit more out of it certainly that last cutscene is strong like whew, yeah. you know it's, it's I, that really had me um reacting let's put it like that because i don't have to then i don't have to spoil it but i thought it was it was really well done but um yeah i mean i, I read the, that excellent piece on the guardian today uh, about the game which kind of made me look at it in a i thought it was just a really well written piece and i love pieces that make you think about games in different ways, even if you end up not necessarily agreeing with everything that you say about about how the game is and its length and value and whatnot. But, yeah, I, I, I haven't, but I hear that there's some, some quite strong stuff in there. Yeah, it's just a bit... It's just... It, it, when it's juxtaposed with the sort of slightly stilted and comic book nature of Metal Gear, it's a little bit much. I mean... I like it's just it's too full on it's like you know it's just rubbing your nose and how bad the bad guy is and you know I'd rather it was suggested sort of a little bit artfully rather than just having to listen listen to needlessly explicit recordings of shit happening it's I mean I, I they're successful but I just think they you know it, any artistry is about good taste and I think they just go over the boundary there especially when it's juxtaposed with something that's as sort of mildly goofy as Metal Gear is um, uh, the, the presentation throughout is immaculate um, but the process of playing after the well I'd say midway through the second time was actually quite dull um, because for me it is very much a demo and I didn't want to you know, I didn't want to play it again I don't want to play demos most of the, but the thing is if you're a fan and you want and you want if you've been waiting for this like for a month I reckon you'll get more than your money's worth out of it. I have no doubt that people are going to play around and see what's possible. Yeah. But as I said about the Titanfall beta thing, I, I, I mean, I played that for an untold amount of times. I don't think anybody should be that comfortable with being made to pay for something, which is an advertisement and a, and a demo for, for a game that's not, not out yet. Um, I mean, it's a wonderful advert for the Fox engine and for Phantom Pain, but if you're not a hardcore fan, I don't think it's essential at all. Yeah, I completely agree with that. 100% completely agree with that. Um, the, yeah, 
I don't want to necessarily go back in and toy with the, the systems that much more, really, mm. of that first mission. Anyway, I do, I will do do a couple of the side missions, I think, and may, maybe one more run of the uh, of the other one to see if I could do it in a completely different way. And the, the way that I ended up doing it was actually really good. It started off really stealthy. Things went a bit wrong. Ended up breaking out in a in a truck, and it was good. Like it was kind of like it was very cinematic. I really did enjoy it. But yeah, it's just I don't know. That's a lot of money. I don't. What I do, I know I don't like the cover. That's why I don't. I think that's that's out of order, quite frankly. Mm. To to just make no no <laughs> what's the word? There's no there's no oh, fucking hell. <sighs> it doesn't matter. No, no, I know what you mean. No there indication. Is, there is no, there's a word. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that exactly. it's a short game. Mm. Yeah, it's. It is a difficult one because I did. I had some amazing moments in it. The, the second time I did it on Rambo mode, sprinting down with a, the girl on my shoulder and everyone just gunfire and the lens flaring. I was like, mm. this is wicked. This is proper, <laughs> like, feels like next gen gaming. Mm. This is awesome. But it is a demo. I just, uh, people have, I, I've, I, I, you know, for the two brief occasions I signed into Twitter this week, it was all, people were sort of having bitch offs about it, um, which is just, you know, same old fucking shit. People arguing. Um, mm. you know, well, get, yeah. get, video games are an art form when I'm an adult but if you don't agree with me you're a fucking cunt <laughs> you know, it's just such nonsense um, but yeah I, I do think it's difficult because if, I, if there was like a Vanquish 2 and they did this I know I'd get an untold amount of hours out of yeah. the demo but I, don't, I think collectively we should all just say it's not cool that they're charging £30 or something because it is a demo for something that's not out for them to make 30 quid a pop on top of this it's funny this isn't available as a download is it? is it not? I thought I everything was. Uh, I, not as far as I know. I mean, if it is, that's fine. Uh, for some reason, it's not I, out I, yet. That's a very, I'm an idiot. I, mean, I, just, <laughs> I was going to say I haven't seen it on the bloody uh, marketplace. Uh, I was going to say that was dumb because they're going to lose. If they've got the first couple of weeks sales, and then the fucking country is going to be inundated with secondhand copies. Yeah. Believe you me. Oh yeah. Um, so uh, if they made it download only, that I mean that would have been fucking snide as a bastard. But I mean at least I don't know. I'm trying to help them sell more. Forget it. Anyway, listen, play it if you want to play. If you're a massive, if you're a fucking massive Metal Gear fan, I reckon you'll probably love it. Yeah, it's it's difficult. I I don't even know what to say about it. It's it, it's a it's a demo. Yeah, well it's I think you're stuck like me, stuck thinking the two things at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Nightmare. I think I saw. I think a segment. I think it was the Edge review. Uh, a section said if it's a demo. Well, it's the best demo ever. Maybe. Still a demo, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But it's such a lavish demo that it almost feels like you should pay something for it. I yeah, don't know. It, fe- yeah. it feels like you're dipping your toes in it. It's something that's clearly in the future. I mean, the Fox engine, just like for action games, I was like, that's where it's at. Yeah. Right? I can't wait for the game now. Yeah. Like, it's gonna, it feels like it's really going to... Uh, Metal Gear 4 was kind of divisive for me. I had some amazing things. The cutscenes were absolutely diabolical, but this seems like it's it's full on full on snakeage, and I do like mm. a bit of snakeage, but not as much as some people. Well, I, I I'm I'm the I mean I like I the only the only two I've finished are Snake Eater and um, Peace Walker. The other ones I never finished, and I mean two and four were just way too much for me. I don't I don't think I got anywhere in four. I just yeah they try my patience too much, but mm. I really can't wait to play this. I I, I mean yeah. It does look fucking amazing. Yeah, it does. And apparently the PS4 version looks way better. But that can't work. I'm, I'd be amazed how. Hmm. Yeah. So was that your number two as well? Yeah. Okay, then uh, number one's the same, I assume. Hmm. Titanfall. Titanfall. Xbox One. Um, mm. Yeah, certainly. After coming from the super smooth Fox engine to the... Less than super smooth Titanfall engine. I do hope they uh, they can patch that to get the frame rate uh, a bit more solid, but never mind. Everything else uh, on my notes I've just written is glory. Mm. Titanfall is uh, a glorious video game. Whether you're playing with friends, which we've done uh, this week, which has been absolutely tremendous, and uh, pretty sure we haven't lost a game. Mm. And today I just uh, had a few games on my own when the Xbox One decided it didn't want me to see any friends anymore. The whole thing was yeah. broken, just f- fucking broken for no reason for a bit. Yeah. Uh, had tremendous games on my own, experimenting with the different weapons, trying different things, um, just kind of pushing the limits of what you can do with the parkour, trying to get your best build for different characters, best build for your Titan, 
there's so much depth there in, in, in terms of the customization options aren't as broad as something like the, the latest Call of Duties or, or even Battlefield in terms of all the different guns and all the different attachments and whatnot. But all the, everything in there makes so much difference, I think, when just changing one little thing makes a huge amount of difference. And you can, I really feel like I can build a Titan that mm. can do a specific job. Like I've got a Titan that is one of the fast ones, but it can get in close ruin someone in seconds and get out it doesn't do much damage against the pilots running around but it's basically a titan killer so for specific you know if i'm going to be playing a match where i know it's going to be important like take out titans i can pick that one if i if i'm going to be playing a game of pilot hunter i'm going to have the one that's got a gun and it's it's not beyond anybody to start building things for specific circumstances whereas i've always found myself a little bit out of depth on on call of duty and, and things when you're trying to build for specific things but titanfall has that that down and then just the games themselves i had a capture the flag game on friday night uh unbelievable absolutely unbelievable it's like being in a film uh mm. just amazing drama excitement uh, I, had, I had a tremendous game myself did really well in that particular match the combination of the parkour and then grabbing the flag jumping in a titan jumping back out oh it's it's an amazing game. There's been a little bit of a backlash against it so far. Not a huge amount, but has there really? Yeah, you know, it's just Call of Duty with robots. It's just people just like it to be shit. But I, I just cannot believe how well made it is, how accomplished it is, how confident it is, how incredibly good fun it is, mm. uh, and how thrilling it is. Uh, every single match, even the the even matches that I lose, where I say I'm playing on my own, I don't mind because mm. not only do you get the brilliant thing where you get to redeem yourself by trying to get to the the drop shit but even even if i'm just getting smashed up there's still there's always going to be some fun to be had there whether i just uh try and ignore the pilots for a bit and just shoot some grunts or try different i don't know there's just try different burn cards just to see what they do like there's all there's always fun to be had in titanfall mm. Um, I'm surprised to hear there's been a battle, but yeah, I mean, that is... I, it's dumb, I mean, it's just like me reading a few forums and just people being idiots, but there's not really... It's not been hugely vocal. Yeah. Um, well, I've played it non-stop since it came out. Um, it is a little bit daft that the campaign unlocks stuff, um, but it is no different from playing the game, as you said, so mm. I mean, it's, it, it's all good. Have people actually been shitty about the fact that the, 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 the campaign side of things? Um, yeah, do you know what? I, I watched two separate YouTube videos... Um, Total Biscuit and the Angry Joe Show. Uh, I had to turn off Angry Joe Show. I don't. I'm way too old to watch that guy. Uh, but Total Biscuit is like a you know a guy that explains things and um, speaks in, in in a reasonably intelligent way. But both of them spent huge. Like both of the videos were over thirty minutes long, but they spent like good twelve minutes berating the fact that the campaign mode isn't a proper campaign mode, which is a fucking redundant thing to do in criticism anyway, to, to complaining about what the game isn't instead of what the game is is pointless. Mm. But I just thought my instant reaction to I, I said it last week and I, I wrote it down. It's just inoffensively rubbish the campaign in this game it's like oh well, you know that's a bit shit but it doesn't matter because it's Titanfall the, the, who cares anyway. That's that's yeah. the reaction. And if you it, well, they're both like lambasting the fact that it wasn't a proper campaign and it should have been like this and it should have been like this and it should have been in their marketing. This is why they didn't talk about it in their marketing. It's like, they play, play what's there, motherfuckers. Don't play what isn't there. What's wrong with you? And it's frustrating because those guys, they've got unbelievably huge audiences. And I don't mean to sound bitter, you know, if they're, they're making content every single day and uh, cultivating an audience for themselves and absolutely fair play to them. But it's frustrating for someone who's been doing this a long time, to hear fucking morons talking about spending 12 minutes talking about that shit. Just mm. talk about what's there, talk about what's good, talk about why it's good, talk about why it's bad, don't talk about what's not there, it's pointless. Yeah, I, I'd be interested if there's any crossover, because every time, every year, people bitch about the fact that um, Battlefield's bothered to have a campaign. Why is it there? I'm one of those people. Why the <laughs> fuck is it there? And I, uh, most people, like me, say, just don't bother with the campaign. And that's essentially what they've done with Titanfall. So yeah. I'd be really interested to know if there's any crossover with people who bitch about Battlefield every year and people who are saying that this is bad, because uh, it's not bad. The only thing, uh, it's not a bad thing, but I think Pilot Hunter is is significantly the weakest mode. I mean, yeah. it's just that, uh, um, attrition. Um, but for some reason, whenever I'm in a lobby and Pilot Hunter comes up, everyone leaves. Um, I've had some terrific games on Pilot Hunter. It's not; it's still great. I mean, it's just it's uh, it's kind of a cursory addition. I don't think there's a, there's there's such a little amount of difference between that and um, uh, attrition. Yeah, um, it's like attrition with sort of 
33 percent of the fun taken out of it for no real reason i don't but, know if it's 33 percent. i mean i still i still have great games on it yeah um, but I um, like I like getting points for killing titans. I like getting points for killing the, the things. I get it. I get why it's there. But I don't know. It just you know, it's never. I mean, I feel the same as you. Yeah, um, I like the I like the achievements. I'll always doff my cap to clever achievements. And there's a there's one for um, winning on every campaign map. And there's like getting fifth playing campaign missions fifty times, which means that people. Will always be playing those campaign mm. missions so that people who get the game will always be playing them and I just thought that's really clever um, a few reviews um, d- definitely a few but I know that there's a couple that I, that I remember um, described the you know they were trying to summarise and they said that the combat may not be you know it's not complicated um, and I think that's a really kind of lazy thing to say because it's easy to grasp and it's extraordinarily immediate like a great shooter should be mm. but if you want complexity you have got it I mean on Capture the Flag especially you have to coordinate your Titans, the turrets if there are any on mm-hmm. the map, your burn cards um, being in a Titan at the right time can win the game but being in a Titan at the wrong time can lose it for you there's a million factors and I just think calling it sort of simplistic or not complicated is completely wrong because when you really when you're sort of being vocal with your team and you plan or use all of those elements mm. to win, there's the best feeling in the world. Um, if I was reviewing this for a magazine or, or, or a website or something, I, I'd give it 10 out of 10. Um, do I wish there was more maps? Definitely. More Titans? Perhaps more weapons? Do I want more Titanfall? Uh, definitely. But if there was more of it, it wouldn't quite be what this is. And it's just so perfectly refined when yeah. you're playing it. It feels so finished. It feels so completely playtested. It feels as if they took as long as they needed and not a second more or less. And I'm just... I absolutely love it. I, ha- I mean, I'm enjoying it so much. Um, the only one problem uh, with with regards to all that is... I have a problem with the electron, the electric smoke mm. in the beta. That was actually a very efficient way of getting someone who's jockeying you, kill, killing them. Yeah. Now it happens way too slowly. So every time I deploy that, when someone's shooting my brains out on, on my head, uh, by the time it kills them, they've already destroyed me. Um, and I think it just it takes too long. That's my only fault with the actual core of the gameplay. That's the one thing that I think is sort of unbalanced at present. Um, and I'd really love to be able to name my loadouts because I always forget there's different scenarios, you know, different game yeah, types. Yeah. I always forget which one's best for which, but I think someone told me that might be coming. Um, so yeah, uh, it's it's ludicrously entertaining, it really is. I mean, I keep when I'm trying to describe it or liken it to something. I this is the same with the beta. I can't remember whether I said this on here at the time, but I keep coming back to Goldeneye. Mm-hmm. Um, I always think of Goldeneye when I'm trying to compare it to because you know, it's it's compulsive and it's expertly crafted, but it just it feels so new. Um, it really does feel so new. Yeah, it does. I, I, yeah, I mean, I love it. I absolutely effing love it. I just, I want to be playing it right now. I mean, I, I stopped playing it about 10 seconds before we started recording and uh, I want to play it some more. Mm. Yeah, it's magnificent. I probably, mm. get, I, I'm sure, in fact, I would give it 10 out of 10 as well. I don't think it got any 10s anywhere, but... No, but, um, but you know, it'd be... It's the problem when you're reviewing something, you tend to think, oh, but you know, there's things that, yeah, I don't know. I, I understand the sort of pressure. I mean, I, I just know what's there. Just the, the absolute core of that game as it is right now mm. is 10 out of 10, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, just you know, just some of the things that I have that have had happen to me today. Just small things like chasing a guy and then uh, as he turns around the corner, you jump through a window that he didn't realize that you were going to be there until you pop up in front of him and shoot him with a shotgun. Things like that that you can't do in other shooters because, you know, that you don't have the movement options. Um, yeah, and then you can just do the Xbox record that, which is nice, so you can watch them again. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, mm-hmm. I was worried at one point. I think we were playing in the week, and we I, I played the same same campaign same campaign mission too many times uh, and heard the mm-hmm. same sound bites, and I was like, oh, is this losing its magic? And then it's not. It was just I played that one like eight times by that point, and I'd heard, I was sick of hearing a South African bloke. Um, but obviously you don't really hear them in the same way when you're playing normal, uh, you know, normal... Um... Outside of the campaign. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So I'm looking forward to, to what comes to the game next. If there are going to be more modes, obviously there's the DLC and maps and stuff, but I, I'm very interested to, to see what comes next. It's sort of uh, the, the first update, I'm sure, will be reasonably soon. So, yeah, uh, powerful Titanfall. Love it. That's it, isn't it? 
just it, done. yeah, around an hour. Not bad for for uh, a shorter episode. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening. As always, uh, yeah, the, the reason it was a shorter one is because we've been extremely busy. So it, it, as opposed to being less busy, it actually makes more sense to do one of these episodes when we're more busy because we have to concentrate time uh, on specific games. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week. Well, I will be anyway. I don't think Chet will be. He's fucked off. So I'm fucking off. Yeah, you're fucking off. So next week will be uh, a podcast with PC gamer editor and good friend of mine, Samuel Roberts, and myself. And yeah, then we'll be back to the usual shit after that. So uh, <laughs> uh, latest. Oh yeah, check Twitter at John Denton at Chet Roivers at Chet and John's. Check YouTube Chet and John's. Those Titanfall stuff going up there at the moment. You need to get on that shit. Mm. We'll see you soon. Goodbye. Snake, it's been a while. Do you remember me? Liquid? No, this is McDonald Miller, your old buddy. Who? Are you from Snake's Revenge? No, Snake. Don't you remember? Why is there a helicopter in the background? It's my stomach. I'm hungry. Hungry for worms? No, hungry for words. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up.